Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another episode of Papa Flemish Advent Calendar. Back with an integral. Okay. Oh, I simply have the most orgasmic pronunciation of the word integral here on all of YouTube. Seriously. Oh, don't forget to check out Papa Flemish shop. Okay. I'm right now wearing one of my most favorite designs ever. This is just fucking dope. I, I, I really love this thing. 10 to 15% of everything in Papa Flemish shop. Okay. Over the whole, whole course of the December. Now, we are going to dive right in. That's an old Putnam exercise and it's quite fun, okay? We have multivariable integral over n integrals and we have this thing right here with the cosine and this shit and its arguments. And what we are basically going to use are dummy variables. Link in the description, okay? I want you guys to remember a simple fact, okay, that all the people out there hate. Pure mathematicians hate this one simple trick, okay? If we have an integral from a to b of f of x, this is actually the same as the integral from a to b of f of a plus b minus x. Okay, it's, it's easy verifiable, okay? It's really easy to verify, just introducing simple substitutions. a is zero in our case, meaning we are simply going to end up with a b minus x. And we are going to do the substitution n times on each and every variable. Meaning what we are going to do is we say, let each and every xi in this case, be equal to one minus some ui, for example. Okay, and we're going to plug this bitch in, leaving us with, I'm going to call all of those integrals, they are running over the same up and lower bounds yet again. I'm going to say this is just a region gamma or whatsoever, I really don't give a shit. Then we have the cosine squared of pi over two times n. And also each x i is going to be replaced by one minus ui, okay? And I'm going to call u yet again x using dummy variables, okay? You know the thing, okay? u is equal to x because this thing in here is not a, uh, or overall this i, this integral is just a constant, it's not a function with respect to x, so it really doesn't quite matter what we call this variable, okay? Dummy variable principle, I really don't care, okay? It's a really easy thing. Not worth explaining too much anymore. So we are going to have one minus x1 plus 1 minus x2 plus da 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 up until 1 minus xn. And then also we have all of our dx i's yet again. I'm going to put it like this. Those are just all the differentials that we have right here. And now one cool thing is we can actually count a bit of stuff. Okay, we have 1 plus 1 plus 1 up until n times 1, okay? We, we have n once in total, meaning this is additive. We can break this up into actually the cosine squared of pi over 2n and we have n times 1, which is n. n and n is going to cancel out. Mm, this is so good here, seriously. And then we are also going to have minus pi over 2n and then x1 plus dot 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 up until xn yet again the xi. And now you might notice something if you take a look at the graph of the cosine. Okay, we have the cosine right here. If you were to shift this big boy pi over 2 to the left in this case, we would actually end up with the sine. Okay, this thing right here is just a sine of negative pi over 2n times this chunk, but we have the sine squared. Sine is an odd function, so sine of negative x is sine of x, meaning we can bring negative 1 to the outside, square it and get rid of the negative sine. Meaning this overall is nothing other than the integral of sine squared pi over 2n x1 plus dot 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 up until xn of all those x i's in differential form. Now we came pretty far because this thing is still our i and here comes the principle of dummy variables in yet again. Why not add our integral i to our original integral i, okay? Leaving us with 2 times i being thus equal to all the integrals range from 0 to 1 so we can use the linearity of the integral and stay in the same region, gamma cosine squared of all of this shit plus sine squared of all of the same crap, okay? dxi. Meaning sine squared plus cosine squared is nothing other than one. Meaning we are going to end up with the first integral, okay? Just x1 
So if we integrate 1, it's going to be x. So x1 from 0 to 1 is going to result in 1. Multiply together n times up until xn from 0 to 1, which is going to be 1 yet again. So overall, this chunk right here is going to be 1 in the limit. And now i is thus nothing other than 1 half. And in the original Putnam question, okay, we also had the limit as n goes to infinity, okay, so in the normal case, the original Putnam question would include the limit as n goes to infinity, but this thing overall under the condition that everything converges, we can bring the limits together, use linearity of the integral, is going to be one half. So even in the limit, the limit of a constant is just a constant itself, we are going to be left with, yeah, Exactly one half. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, recommend the channel. If you like, don't forget to send those advent calendar videos to everyone, okay? People need to see this shit right here. I have sworn a lot in this video. I did not swore, okay? Up until next video, have a day. Ciao.